Before demonstrating the different x-ray techniques, we need to spend a few minutes discussing asepsis. If you've not watched the infection control portion of the films, review it before moving to direct patient care and x-ray. The dental x-ray room is usually also the treatment area, so the infection control procedures are the same as those used in routine care. Cover and or disinfect the exposed surfaces, including the tube head, the chair, the light handle, and the x-ray button. By following the concept of universal precautions, which states that we should assume that all patients are infectious for the worst of diseases, you make sure that every reusable instrument is sterilized between patients. Regarding dental x-ray, this applies to the film holders. By grouping them and wrapping them to keep them together, much assembly confusion can be avoided. There is a simple system of asepsis that is very effective in dental x-ray. It uses disposable cups and works all the way from the x-ray room through to the dark room. Basically, all needed materials are gathered beforehand. The films and the holders in the x-ray room, the counter cover and the cup in the dark room. And then the process is simple. After the x-ray room and the patient are ready, place the films to be used on a clean paper towel away from the x-ray beam. As each film is used, the now contaminated film is placed in an adjacent cup. When the x-ray procedure is completed, the patient is dismissed and the cup of exposed and contaminated film is moved to the darkroom counter. If a darkroom door must be opened, be sure to use a clean paper towel, not your soiled gloves. Once inside the dark room, lock the door if there is no in-use light on the outside. By law, every dark room must have a safe light for developing intraoral and extraoral films. A GBX2 type works with all dental x-ray films. Remember, any mistake made because of poor visibility directly and adversely affects the patient if a retake is needed. Follow this dental assistant sequence as she places the contaminated films on the counter cover. The films are then removed from the cup, sequentially opened, and then dropped into the clean cup. The act can be likened to cracking an egg and dropping it into a skillet. Make sure that all films are accounted for. If one film is lost, a retake may become necessary. And who suffers? The patient does. Once all of the films have been deposited in this second clean cup, the counter cover is compactly bundled up over the film waste and placed in a biohazard bag. Remember, saliva-tainted items are considered infectious waste in most areas of the country. You now have clean hands, clean film, and clean surfaces that all allow barehanded management of the films. Be sure to handle the films by their edges to avoid contaminating them with uh, powder from the gloves. If either the automatic or the chair-side processor has a daylight loader, which is basically a light-tight box into which you insert your hands through black light-tight openings, special care is needed to avoid irreversible contamination. First, place the cup of films to be developed into the chamber from above. Remove your gloves and close the orange or the red cover. Next, place new gloves. Insert your hands through the openings and then unload the film packets as we just described, inserting the film into the autoprocessor or the cup of chemicals.
When done, take the gloves off while still in the chamber. Remove your hands and then open the top. If the waste must be removed, use a paper towel or another set of gloves. Never pass dirty gloves into or out of the portal that your hands go through. If proper sterile techniques are used, there should be no worry of contamination of the chemicals or film holders. When finished, wash your hands with soap and hot water before leaving the darkroom if possible or as soon afterward as you can. With clear understanding of proper infection control and x-ray techniques, you're ready to expose patients to x-ray. Intraoral x-ray exams are usually performed in a treatment room equipped with an x-ray machine. The room should be properly disinfected and draped prior to seating the patient. After draping the patient with a lead apron, wash your hands and put on the appropriate personal protective equipment, the mask, safety glasses, and gloves. Explain the procedure to the patient, noting how many films are needed and why. Remember, Patients often express concern about radiation. It's often helpful to explain the extremely low dose received, citing ultra-fast films, the use of the lead apron, and finally, emphasize to them that they'd get more radiation flying across the country than in this x-ray sitting. That's why pilots can only fly a limited number of hours each month. There's a wide variety of film combinations. You may be asked to perform a full mouth exam, bite wing x-rays, or both. You may be taking a single x-ray of an emergency patient. Preparation is the same for all. Position the patient in the chair according to the films being made. Upright for upper films and bite wings, and slightly reclined for the lower films. Develop an x-ray sequence in your mind so you don't miss any teeth or x-rays once you get started. You also don't want to accidentally x-ray any teeth twice. Start with tooth number one and work your way to number 32. Or x-ray the anterior teeth first, then the posteriors, and then do the bite wings. Just develop a sequence and stick with it. Some assistants find it helpful to begin with the anteriors since it's much easier on the patient and reassures them early on. Using film holders, make your exposures. When x-raying individual teeth with periapical films, keep in mind that peri means around and apical means root tip. So the film must absolutely extend downward on the bottom teeth and upward on the top teeth to capture the root tips. By properly placing the film as described and centering the x-ray tube head flat on the aiming ring, it'll be hard to miss the x-ray. Two x-ray techniques may be used. The first is called paralleling. This means that we keep the teeth and the film as parallel as possible and let the x-ray beam hit both at a right angle. The second technique, called bisecting angle, describes directing the x-ray beam perpendicular to an imaginary line that's halfway between the line of the tooth and the line of the film, as this illustration shows. Carefully watch now and notice how this dental assistant places and exposes the film in each area of this patient's mouth using the most common and recommended technique, the paralleling technique. When exposing the film to the x-ray, for your protection, remember to get behind the primary x-ray beam and at least six feet from the tube head. Ask anyone else in the room that may be in the line of the x-ray beam to leave, except for the patient, of course, and if they can't, they must wear a lead apron. Only practice develops your x-ray skills. By using proper techniques and film holding devices, you'll minimize retakes and exposing the patient to excessive radiation. Be sure to hang the apron when finished. 
never folded. This keeps the lead from breaking within. The panoral x-ray machine is prepared much like a treatment area itself. It's disinfected and the film is loaded before placing the patient in the machine. This is important since a film cassette that becomes contaminated with saliva or blood must be sterilized or disposed of. So this must never happen since sterilizing the cassette is extremely difficult. Every panoral x-ray machine has its own operating procedure. Be sure to follow the manufacturer's recommendations. Watch now as this dental assistant places and exposes a patient for a panoral radiograph. Notice how she steps at least six feet from the tube head. Since it obviously rotates its primary beam, she can never really stay behind it. There's no real need though, since essentially all x-ray is absorbed by the film cassette and the x-ray unit itself. You may eventually notice that panoral x-ray machines are often placed in high traffic areas. This is perfectly acceptable, a testament to its extremely low radiation output. In fact, there's even no need to interrupt traffic flow by a machine that's in operation. Scatter x-ray levels are essentially non-existent. Remove your gloves and other personal protective equipment and take the film cassette to the dark room for developing and then return to the machine and prepare it for the next patient. Finally, throughout the process of dental x-ray, you may wonder if there's a need for wearing personal radiation monitoring badges. The answer is a simple no. Historically, radiation levels are so low in dentistry that badges have never been required. And this is another testimonial to the degree of dental x-ray safety that you can share with your patients. It's why it's never been law. Many dental offices that strive to exceed the standard of care do use x-ray badges though. Like wearing scrubs, it certainly makes the group look more professional. Not needing the monitoring badges doesn't mean that the doses are so low that you can get sloppy though. Only staying out of the field of x-ray yourself keeps you safe in your day-to-day -day use of dental x-ray. Nothing else will do it.